Hello everyone! How many times we had faced situations when updated assets in the project caused some messed up anchor points with your designs? While with the latest Adobe's released versions it's becoming easier to update, why to bother at all dealing with this manually? All you need to do is to apply expression to anchor point or end position and this will be your long-term safe bet for that item. We'll show you an example in a few moments. With that said, let's jump ahead. Here we have an empty AdFX project with one composition created. It has no layers yet. While this technique could be applied for any type of layers inside of AdFX, for this example, I will use text layer because it has some additional features as well. So we can create any type of text layer with any values as well as parameters for type or paragraph. So let's just create some text. For now, it's completely unimportant where you will place it, as well as where the anchor point will be. The main idea of this technique is to attach the anchor point to some specific area of the layer, and then with the dynamic data updates, it will stick to that place, no matter what type of data you will put in, whether it's a text, an image, or a video, etc. It kind of disregards the size and follow the anchor point which you set in expression. If you already know how expression works, then that's just great, but if not, you can apply expression by selecting the property, in this case it's an anchor point transformation, so by clicking A in this situation, and then by pressing Alt or Option key, clicking the mouse on the stopwatch, where you will have a new input field for expression for that particular transformation. You can delete that default expression value. So to start this off, we will need to get the boundaries of the layer so that its size changes. We will know exactly how huge or small the boundaries of that layer is. In this text scenario, how wide or tall text appears. To achieve this, we will be using source rect at time expression, which retrieves rectangle bounds at specified time value. So we can call it layer bounds and start building this expression. Then we're working with objects in expressions. First item showcase where we will start digging those parameters from. So we will use this layer and will access its bounds at the specified time. We will just add time so that it could reflect the time indicator value. The first line of this expression will return four values. It's top, left position, overall width of the layer, as well as its height. To access values of this object, we will just use that variable and retrieve the object by their name. So it's top, left, width, and height. Those four lines, we have almost everything we need except one thing that anchor point transformation is an array and it requires two values to function properly. It is X and Y directions. With that said, we will open the square brackets and add two values for both of axes. The first item in the array is for x and the second stands for y. To make this work we will add left for x and top for y. The question might be why? Well just because we are setting the initial points of the layer boundaries. We will start estimation from the left side of the layer bounds for x and from the top value of the same layer bounds just for y direction. So now with setting left and top values it will set anchor point at the top left corner. As you can see it's set up in this place. Now what would happen if we want to move the anchor point in any different area of the layer? We can try to do that by moving anchor point manually, but as you can see since the expression is set for anchor point, it can be changed by moving the anchor point with the mouse cursor. We will need to add additional values to the X and Y in order to move the anchor point to a different specific place. To move the anchor point into different location, we will add width position to X and height position value to the Y. And as you might guess it, now we are adding full width to the left corner as well as full, full height to the top point. If it would be a quest, where do you think the anchor point will move now? To my guess, it will appear here. 
And as you can see, it actually did. Now let's do the last thing, add the anchor point to the center. So we just simply divide values for width and height by two, and we will get that result. One problem we have now is that by setting an anchor point, we lose the position where previously layer had been. The last thing which I would recommend to do is to set position expression so that it would reflect the anchor point placement as well. It's all about dynamic updates. If we want it to work well, we need to do it. So let's just fit it inside the screen and let's just add position expression so that the text will always stay in the center as the anchor point. To do this, we also need array of two values, just this time for position. As mentioned, Alt or Option click on the stopwatch, opens the expression input field. And here we need to have two values. One would be width and second height. For position, we want to use global value of the whole composition in order to get its size and then attach the anchor point. Comp will get this current composition object and we will get width. And the same object for end tail of height will get us height. Now, if we want to stick this layer inside of the center of the composition, we will use the array with open and close square brackets and add width divided by two to get the middle of the X position and then height divided into two parts to get the center of height. And now layer will stick in the center of composition. And uh, if you try to move it, it won't. And this is really helpful if you want to add any dynamics to your work. As you can see, it all stuck in place. The last thing I want to show you is related to the character type options as well as the paragraph. So if we turn down the expression of position as well as the anchor point, and just center align the layer. You can see that we have anchor point in random place. And then if we change the paragraph settings, the text will go off and we will need to either readjust the anchor point or move the layer into its required position. Now the expressions I just applied, we can easily change those values without a need to readjust position nor the anchor point. And it also works with any font we might want to have. So it readjusts at the best. And while I was going to finish this tutorial already, one another thing pops into my head and I will show you quickly how this would work if we change the resolution of the composition. So Command or Control K opens the composition settings and uh, I will adjust the anchor point of the composition setting size changing. And this will give us the clue how the composition settings can affect expressions. You can see that position still remained intact of that place. So this is it. As a reminder, we just applied the anchor point expression as well as position expression, and it gave us the results we wanted. And in case we would like to stick this text at the top, we will just add the position of zero and adjust the anchor point to set it only for the top value. And guess what? The text will attach to the top and fit in nicely. Now, while this works quite well, there is additional thing I would like to show you in the future tutorials. It's about scaling the text to fit the composition boundaries perfectly. It's really very important if you're doing any dynamic updates, because if you add a longer text or you would like to fit it perfectly, the comp with your text value, some scaling expression should be applied. In the future tutorials, I will show you how to do this. So for now, this is it. And I hope you could find something useful about that anchor point and position expression thing to set the layer where you want it to be. Thanks for your time and I hope to see you around.